every console system has got its own controllers and uh, some of them design very well. For example, the Dreamcast, easy to hold, everything's in about the right place, feels very nice. As in fact, for example, with this third party N64 controller, all feels very good, holds and moulds into your hands nicely, excellent. You then got the basic two button type ones, which are okay, there's no particular issues with them. Um, but then there's also the very bad ones. And in my view, the Kalika one is the worst controller I've come across. The D-pad needs a long way to move to register, and even then it's a bit hit and miss. The side buttons over here, again, make it very difficult. Then you actually have to put one hand over the other to operate the D-pad. Uh, it's very, very badly designed. And there are other culprits too. But one of the other big issues that we have is that with all this load of controllers you end up with something like this with a box full of stuff and it doesn't matter if you try to wrap the wires up all nicely um, it won't be long before you end up with a big spaghetti load of wires and you try and take something out everything else comes out with it very thick, very unsightly so what I've done is to make one controller, generic controller that will work with all of the console systems to save all this mess. So this is the master controller. Um, it is the master controller because simply it works with all of the console systems. It's a modified Mad Cat's Dreamcast controller which I made to be wider and taller to make it fit for purpose. We have a keypad here which is designed uh, not only for Intellivision for the main action buttons but also for other systems to utilise to save having a load of extra buttons on the system. Um, for example the N64 will use these four for the C buttons, uh, that will be a generic for the start and so on and so forth. It's slightly over to the right of centre because when I hold the system I need to be able to access the buttons easily. If it's further over to the left I have to adjust my grip and um, that's not a very good way to hold a controller. So it's done that on purpose. There's two digital shoulder buttons, analogs, and also this goes into digital as well. These, well, again, different controllers have got different colour codes for the action buttons that they use. So what I've done is to make these removable just by using nuts and bolts. So they're easily interchangeable, make them however you need them to be and all you do is screw it back into place, very quick process and you've got your fully working button again. On the back of the system, this is where everything works, it's the N64 game port and that acts as the interface between the information coming up from the console into the controller board and the controller board back to the console and also identifying what has been pressed so it knows what to do in a game. This keypad, as mentioned, has got various um, features, game dependent, so I've made different overlays um, to work with it. So for example for this television game, we just pop it into place and you know what you're doing. Pops in and out easily. Now some of these controller boards are quite small and some are large, however um, these boards can be reduced as required to fit into the standard casing and this is an example of one that was produced in this case for a GameCube. So systems that use the joysticks like this I can easily demonstrate popping together and then clipping into place and now you have your system all ready to work with GameCube. Looks very neat it's actually nice and integrated and to take it apart hold it in the middle and just take it through. I've made two case blanks for the holes here because if you only have one joystick or none at all you don't really want to have holes sticking through. So we take an example of a system that doesn't have any joysticks we pop these into position they only go in one way
or easy to operate like this. And we take, for example, the Amiga, which as mentioned has got no uh, joysticks in it. Incidentally, these are metal blocks. Uh, this centerpiece is the metal I got from shielding. The reason being is that I got some very strong magnets in here from a hard disk drive, uh, as mentioned, which will stop the system from levering up and damaging the connections. Um, I'll put two more here for the back of that to make it look nice. So we pop this into position, and as you see, you've now got your blanks. Same way if you're using with one joystick. Oops, wrong one. Put that back in. Take it out. And for the Intellivision, a custom made a D pad. Again, pop into position. You've got your single joystick and you've got your blank. Oh, it's very integrated and very neat. And that's the master controller. And this will work with all the console systems. One controller, one cord. Very neat. So here's evidence of the game working. The couch is moving nicely. This is quite a good feature because it's very hard on the Intellivision. Oops be able to get rid of this particular character. Much easier with this d pack configuration. And there we go. And also just to show as before, everything works fine with this controller. And of course you've got your Unlocks. Mm -hmm.